welcome. Thank you so much for being here. And welcome to everyone who is uh, live on Facebook and YouTube as well. Uh, it's really nice to be here. My name is Kavya. I'm a student from Ashoka University. And yes, you guessed it. I'm a student of both Professor Priyanks as well as Professor Suits. Basically, I'm here because keeping your camera on during the pandemic actually makes a big difference. Uh, I'm living proof that reminding your professors of homework sometimes actually gives you, you know, something later down the line. And it really pays off. I mean, did you taste the samosas outside? They were fantastic. Um, yeah, I mean, it's also great to be around some of the sharpest minds in the country and all of that, but most importantly, eating samosas with them. Anyway, truly, welcome everyone. We're here to celebrate the launch of a book that has been nearly, I don't know, seven years in the making. <laughs> it's a book that is a product of the best classrooms that India has to offer. And it's one classroom that all of us really want to be in and will hold dear to our hearts for a long time to come. The book is truly a culmination of everything that these classrooms have taught us as well. The importance of community, entrepreneurial drive, passion, and of course, a whole lot of damn good stories. So to give you a taste of that classroom, I'd also like you to open your copies of uh, Leapfrog on your tables. And surprise, not a copy. It's uh, actually a bingo inside there. And you'll see every single class with these professors eventually just turned into our little betting circles because they have these little quirks. Um, so we figured you should be able to enjoy them as well. Uh, standard bingo rules do not apply to this bingo. If you hear them say something or do something that's mentioned in the bingo, cut it off. And if you get all of them towards the end of it, come and meet me, because we have a special gift for everybody who is able to do that, rather the first people who come to me after being able to do that. Um, we have a signed copy uh, from all our panelists, and trust me, you want to get your hands on that. I will not be selling mine on eBay, not at all. Um, so <laughs> anyway, one last thing to remind you is that this is our classroom now. So mandatory fun is recommended. Mandatory fun is recommended. But without further ado, I'd like to invite the authors of the hours on stage. And among some super exciting things that they do, like being the founding director of the Center for Entrepreneurship at Ashoka, Priyank Narayan is one of the toughest graders out there. His partner in crime, Mukesh Sood, is a serial entrepreneur in abrasive blasting and thermal spray coatings, and is really no better on the grading front. I say this because they're some of the only professors that will actually really notice if you miss a class and make sure that you catch up and don't slack off on it. So professors, if I would really enjoy seeing you on stage, thank you so much. Good evening. What a delight. Thank you so much for uh, being here this evening. This has been a dream. This is something that uh, Mukesh and I have been working on for uh, the last, contrary to what Kavya said, seven years. We've been working on it for the last uh, two and a half years. And the idea of LeapFrog was really to put together some of the amazing stories that we have in our classrooms. Uh, Mukesh uh, has been uh, visiting Ashoka for the last seven years. Uh, and I've had the honor of working with him, um, trying to uh, capture some of the amazing things that our students are doing uh, ha or have been doing over many years. So many of our students, many of alum our alumni come back to us and share with us their journeys, their stories of what's worked for them um, and what's been the most powerful thing that they've implemented at work. And based on all of these anecdotes and stories and journeys and fun moments that they've had, we've uh, put uh, this book together, which has nuggets uh, capsuled into six chapters on what's working for them. Um, it's a book for everyone. So I have my nine-year-old here, who's also reading the books. Avyan, say hi to everyone. Uh, and he's, he's loved the stories. And I also have uh, you know, my dad, who's on the other end of the spectrum, who loves some stories from there. So it's, it's a whole bunch of uh, fun stories for you. Um, this 
book came about as a collaboration between Mukesh and I. Um, and it's a collaboration that happened because Ashoka and I'm Ahmedabad actually came together to, to create, uh, I would like to believe, one of the most powerful centers of excellence at Ashoka, the Center for Entrepreneurship, which, uh, of course, uh, with the mentorship and guidance of InfoEdge and Sanjeev and, and other founders, uh, we've been able to build. Um, so uh, we'll share more about the book, but uh, Mukesh, would you like to say a few words? Yeah, so my journey to Ashoka has been a little different from Priyank's. Um, my daughter was in the founding batch, as many of you know, and I would visit her on weekends to spend time with her. And at, on one such visit, um, I met the founders, uh, Priyank, uh, we went and had coffee and uh, cake at Ashish's place, if you remember. <laughs> and then uh, given that I had been teaching in liberal arts universities in the US, they asked whether I would like to teach there. Now, I never believed anybody would sign up for a course that I was teaching, and my daughter threatened that she won't let any of her friends sign up. But we offered a course, and the course went well. And it's been a seven-year journey or six-year journey after that. And I've been teaching virtually every term since then, and thoroughly enjoying it. It's different from the IIM. Uh, we have undergrad students, but they're a lot more malleable and a lot more inquisitive. And um, it's a different cup of tea, which I, I, I like. Um, about the book, um, uh, none of the research in the book is our own research. This is research in the social sciences, in polit political theory, in economics, in sociology. These are stories from maths, from music, from medicine, that we have researched thoroughly. And uh, my, my uh, belief has, be, is, is, has always been that a lot of the research that we academics do uh, remains hidden in academic journals. So we go through a very uh, review and revise process, and then three, four years later, we have an article, and not many people read it. So our attempt in this book has been to take out those nuggets of information that is stored in journals and bring it into a book uh, that people can read. Um, we all write academic papers, but my wife famously once said that every time she has insomnia, all she has to do is open a paper that I've written, <laughs> and she's asleep in 30 seconds. So this, the attempt here is to make things simple, make them a little elegant, and we have used stories and nuggets uh, without using too many frameworks, which we love doing in our MBA classes. So that's my story, and that's the book. Hopefully, you'll, you'll all enjoy it. So um, you know, like I said, this, this collaboration was an outcome of I'm Ahmedabad and Ashoka uh, coming together. And the catalyst uh, behind this collaboration was uh, none, on the, none other than uh, Sanjeev Bhikchandani, sir. Um, I've had, I now I have the honor of introducing him, and I think he's one person who needs no introduction. He's been an, been an institutional builder it, from as an as a entrepreneur, as an investor, and as a philanthropist. And you know, he's built institutions like InfoEdge, Nokri, Policy Bazaar, Zomato. The list goes on and on and on. But I think one of the most amazing institutions uh, that you've built is Ashoka University, uh, for which all of us are beneficiaries. And I think it's going to be a model uh, which the world is going to see, not just India, the world is going to see um, as, as a great model of world-class education being delivered. Um, for all his accolades, for all that he's done for the country and the world, of course, uh, he was conferred the Padam Shri. And uh, we are very, very thankful for the patronage that uh, your uh, company and, and you give to the Center for Entrepreneurship at Ashoka. May I invite you um, on the stage, please? please. Yeah, OK. Uh, so thanks, thanks. So uh, I've been asked to introduce Errol and call him onto the stage. Now, I've got a two paragraph bio data which does not do justice. You know, uh, so, Director IMA uh, <coughs> studied economics and statistics from the University of Mumbai, gold medalist, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, his recent book titled Conceptualizing the Ubiquity of Informal Economy Work was published by Springer Nature 
and has been highly appreciated among labor economists. Okay, so that's the formal introduction done. <laughs> so I have had the privilege of working with Errol for the last I don't know, maybe five years, I don't, I don't know how long, uh, closely. So I'm on the board of the Center for Innovation, Incubation and Entrepreneurship at IMA. So we met there. Uh, but more importantly, there's an IMA Endowment Trust of which I'm a member and a trustee and a donor. And there we work very closely. And I must say, Errol has taken the institution forward uh, in several significant ways. I think most notable is um, ensuring that the alumni made significant financial contributions to the IM Endowment Trust to ensure the institution endures and has uh, you know, enough financing going forward. Uh, I think uh, recruitment of faculty, taking the institution towards uh, research uh, in at, a, at a pace and uh, you know, faster than before. I think uh, ensuring that there's a new vision document uh, for the institution, which uh, hopefully will make public uh, sooner rather than later, uh, with the help of McKinsey. Uh, I think all of these are contributions that I know of. I'm sure there are several that I don't know. Uh, I think he's also uh, been able to stand firm uh, and resolute in the face of opposition, whether it's uh, campus renovation, whether it is uh, a, a, a simple thing, a new logo. I think he's managed to navigate it and push it through. So Errol, please come on stage. Thank you. It's, a, it's an honor to be here today. And I actually you know, hold in very high regard this partnership that we have with Ashoka. As you can see, I mean, I'm the only guy in, out here today who's wearing a tie. <laughs> okay? And partly, you know, that's an institutional thing. Of course, I'm not wearing the institution tie. This is the four services tie. Okay, so those of you who come from any of the services, this is a very rare tie to get as an honor. Okay. Uh, it's not just that you know, management you know, brings out people who you know, will come out in formal attire. Uh, it was nice to hear that some things are common between Ashoka and IMA. One is the samosas. Okay. Uh, it's really been, you know, whenever I hear from Mukesh, about what's going on at Ashoka and some of the other faculty who come and teach. It is really a pleasure to know about all the developments that are taking place and how liberal arts education and other education as well is actually contributing to a group of people who will be change makers in the world. And you know that's really the founding principle of IMA that you have to you know, go out and make a difference whether it's in entrepreneurship, okay, or whether it's you know, joining the NGO sector, or whether it's in government, whatever you do, leave a mark behind. Okay? And it's that you know, striving towards excellence and leadership, which is what you know, we try our best to ensure we ingrain in those who go through our portals. Okay? And of course, the stories you know, are there to tell. Uh, but today, it's a pleasure to actually you know, have this launch of this wonderful book, you know, which is again full of stories. Uh, unlike Mukesh, I sort of, you know, see frameworks in them. He's not revealed those frameworks very slyly, okay? But, uh, you know, in academics, we have this saying, do you want to be a fox or do you want to be a hedgehog, okay? The fox knows many things, okay? That's, that's the case about foxes. But the hedgehog knows one very big thing, okay? And that's very much part of you know, what this book is about. It's actually trying to you know, talk about the intersections that we see 
across disciplines. This is what both of the authors did say earlier. And uh, in those intersections, we see life in a very different way. Uh, we understand the complications that arise when you think of things in a systemic fashion. It's not just that you know, being deep into a discipline, like today everyone wants to be in some aspect of data science, okay? It's good to have that depth of knowledge, but at the same time, when you, if you want to resolve issues that are going to make an impact on the world, it's more than important that you have a breadth across disciplines, which allows you then to you know, think about problems in a very different fashion and impact the world accordingly. At IMA, we therefore have you know, courses which you know, straddle across uh, all sorts of disciplines. Uh, I think students are spoiled for choice. Uh, I have never seen an institution anywhere in the world giving the number of electives that we do. Uh, in, a, in the second year, for something like 450 students, there are 130 electives. Okay? And those go all the way from you know, political science to theater to cinema to media to you know, digital arts to all sorts of things. And the idea is to give everyone the opportunity to you know, benefit from the best that's available in the world in the field of knowledge and then to take that and you know, go out and work somewhere in the world and transform it. Okay, that's we, we, when we push students out, okay, and we, we literally push them out because they don't want to leave, okay, we, we finally tell them, you know, we've graduated you, it's your turn to go change the world. Okay. So this is a, uh, you know, it, this is really a, a wonderful moment for the institute, for, for both the institutions, both the authors, and I'm sure for you know, generations of students who will enjoy reading this book, will learn a lot from it and you know, will, as a result of that, themselves go out and make changes to the world in whatever way that they do it. Okay. So congratulations and thanks. You know, I'd like to add something. So I'd just like to just mention for two minutes how the Ashoka IMA partnership came about. So in IMA, in, in Ashoka, we had uh, the Center for Entrepreneurship. It was not really doing a lot in academics and offering too many courses. Uh, it was doing a lot of events on entrepreneurship. And then Ashish and I think I suggested, listen, we should try and offer courses and get to a minor in entrepreneurship. Now, the rest of the Ashoka departments and centers could not really contribute here because they were doing something different. So I said, look, uh, I can try and talk to IIM Ahmedabad. It's a long shot. IIM Ahmedabad does not give collaborations easily. They're very conscious of their brand, uh, and rightly so. But I said, we, I think we've done enough in Ashoka that perhaps they will. And so I went and spoke, and I think a lot of people were open. Uh, Rakesh Basant helped, Amit Karna helped, Ashish Nanda was open, the former director. Uh, and now we have several faculty coming, Mukesh, of course, uh, Asha Kaul, uh, Sushil Jhangi, and he was a visiting faculty at IMA, he comes. Uh, you know, uh, and then there are others from the IMA, I would say Galaxy, who come. Uh, Rashmi Bansal comes, I think Sunil Handa comes and teaches. So I think this collaboration, and now we have a whole lot of people, a, a large number of uh, professors of practice who come in from industry. So this year, I think the Center for Entrepreneurship, this, this term, you know, in just this semester, there are 30 courses. 30 courses being offered. Uh, in one semester, which means probably 60 in a year, okay? which for an undergrad liberal arts university, which does not offer a major in entrepreneurship, uh, only a minor, I think is also totally remarkable. And we are at Ashoka are grateful uh, that IMM was supported and continues to support uh, and sense faculty. Uh, and uh, from the IMM side, you know, I'm very happy in the collaboration as well. Let me add a small snippet here. Um, I teach at both places, and with the excess of courses being offered, you can imagine how challenging it is to faculty like all of us to fill classes. So some sympathy for that. <laughs> thank you, thank you so much. It's an honor to have all of you here, and uh, we, we know Professor Sood. It's why we stay up till 9 to attend your courses as well. 
Um, so thank you so much for everyone, for everything so far. And now I'd like to invite two folks who I very recently learned are actually a huge fan of the Beatles. Um, uh, very often you'll find them uh, throwing around a disc on the frisbee field, jamming with students in the library cafe, and just their charm and charisma has brought them to a point where students are fighting for FaceTime with them. So without further ado, please uh, let me welcome on stage Mr. Ashish Havan, co-founder of Chris Capital, the Central Squ Square Foundation, and Ashoka University, and Dr. Pramat Raj Sinha, co-founder at Ashoka, the Harappa Education, and the founding dean of the Indian Business, uh, School of Business on stage. Joining them is Primanka Goswami, uh, an associate publisher and editor at Penguin Random House India. With more than 15 years in India's publishing scenario, he enjoys ideating and experimenting in publishing. He was named editor of the year in 2019 and knows this book better than everyone. Uh, and I'm pretty sure even better than professors here. <laughs> So um, Primanko is uh, an editor with, uh, with Penguin, and he is the one who actually just made this book happen. He is the one who is responsible for LeapFrog. He made us LeapFrog. And we are thankful for that, Primanko. Thank you so much. Thank you. Do you have a copy? Yes, sir. OK, great. So maybe we can just. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for that. Primango, can I request you to stay here? Can I go to it? Yes, please. Yes. I wanted to use, use the podium because, you know, prolixity is in the DNA of the editors. And this is uh, the evening, you know, we should celebrate Mukesh and Priyank. So good evening, everyone. Truth be told, we often identify books with two, two purposes. They either educate or entertain. However, there are some books which cover both the grounds. Leapfrog by Mukesh and Priyank is a classic example of this. It is inviting, easy to approach, and amazingly readable. You may either read it in one sitting or perhaps stagger the reading, revisit the book, and fall back upon it every now and then. Uh, six easy and implementable steps which will help us stay relevant and thrive at work. And apparently, uh, this might appear to be very easy and uh, you know, not a big deal. But the story of the making of this book is you know, quite something. I remember <coughs> the sleepless nights Mukesh and Priyank had. And at one point, you know, that that's the joke we used to share, which Mukesh said that, you know, Citibank never sleeps and Leapfrog never sleeps. Uh, we had multiple drafts, writing and rewriting. And uh, uh, they were actually trying their best to simplify the complex ideas so that we as readers can relish the ev every, you know, word of the book. And I think that we were able to achieve it to a great extent. And to quote what Mukesh said at one point, that Primanko, this book should be a wo work of art. 
and I must congratulate that you know, it looks like that. We are at Penguin Random House India thrilled to publish this book and we sincerely, sincerely hope that you will share our enthusiasm by supporting it, by you know, reading what is there between these two you know, lovely covers. Finally, editors are expected to be elusive. And I told this to Priyank yesterday, and I always tell that, so that the book and the authors are foregrounded and celebrated. Therefore, without wasting any time, I would, on behalf of Penguin Random House India, congratulate Mukesh and Priyank once again. We are so proud of this book, and as T.S. Eliot said, in my end is my beginning. So we look forward to working with you in future. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, I have the privilege of uh, moderating what is supposed to be a master class. Uh, so uh, I thought I had the easy way out, but this is going to be tough. I'll start with the two authors. And again, congratulations to both of you. Fantastic. I have uh, a question each for, and this the first question is for Mukesh. So uh, confident idiots dance with disciplines audacity of asking, debunk the bullshit. When ideas have sex, this can't be Priyank's language. <laughs> <laughs> or is it? You see, I have the director of I Am Amdavad sitting here. So I won't answer that question. I'll pass it on to Priyank. <laughs> uh, very very uh, conversational and very accessible. How hard was it? I, I just heard that you stayed up nights doing this, but was there a deliberate attempt? You said that earlier, but how hard was it to do that? Um, I think, uh, Pramath, a lot of it came from the heart. It came from what we were experiencing every day. Um, it's, it's really capturing the nostalgia of our classrooms. And um, you know, you have so many of our students here today. They've actually heard us say these nuggets and stories in classrooms yeah. every day. So yes, it was hard to, hard to put it into capsules the way we've done it. But I think the experience of it is something that we've lived and it's very authentic. Uh, and, and that's why I say it comes from the heart and it was uh, good to put it out there. I think the, the tough part which actually Mukesh uh, sort of supported in a, in a lot of ways was supporting each of those anecdotes and practice elements with very, very solid research. So nothing in this book is based on what we feel. It may start there, but all of it is supported with very solid research. So if you look at the last few pages, there are almost 30, 40 pages of, of citations, citations and references that support our ideas and thoughts. And these uh, citations are, uh, a few of them are journalistic, but most of them are from uh, proper publications that have been reviewed, that have gone through a review process. So these are very solid research that we have just extracted, converted them into stories, so as to attract the reader and keep the reader engaged. But uh, the foundation is, is very solid, and um, hopefully the readers will enjoy it. Yeah, I, I love the, the, what's the, there's a map in the end, right? The personal journey map. The personal journey map that you kind of fill out for yourself. But that was a leading question, and you almost got there. I thought the young people in your classrooms in, inspired some of the language. And I wanted you to say that these were the bright students of Ashoka University. You sort of said that. Uh, Errol, uh, thank you for this wonderful partnership. Uh, uh, I know that uh, you've been supporting this for the last five years. But uh, as an educator, I wanted to ask you, and I struggle with this all the time, can these skills be taught? Can, can, can people learn them from reading a book? And what's your view on that? Uh, Sanjeev keeps telling me about all his wonderful experiences at IMA and how we are not doing a good enough job at Ashoka. <laughs> uh, so you know, given that he's been so successful and he attributes it all to IMA, mm -hmm. uh, what can we do at Ashoka to teach these skills? And have you seen that happen at IMA? Oh, so thanks. I think first, uh, you know, you s ask them whether, you know, how hard it was. Uh, you know, I think anyone who's been at IMA understands that word hard 
very easily. <coughs> no one sleeps at IMA. Okay, I mean, your, our library is open 24 by 7. Students are up till 3 in the morning and back in class at 8. They surprise quizzes sometimes at 10, 11 at night. Okay, because the world is about, is changing all the time. And you have to be prepared at any moment for anything that comes your way. Uh, so I think... So that's one chapter one, sorry to interrupt you. That is chapter Develop one. Develop grit, the art of endurance. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. I mean, and once you do that, what it does is it transforms you as an individual. You suddenly realize you have reserves in you, you have a depth of understanding that you never thought you had. You suddenly figure out aspects of yourself uh, because you were under stress. Okay? You, if you're not under stress, you don't pick up those aspects of yourself. And that is what I find, you know, people actually, in, when they leave the portals of the institute, uh, you know, have the ability to therefore go out and do you know, wonderful changes you know, to the world. Uh, we believe that that's a sort of a multiplicative process. Okay? A lot of it is collaboration, so that's why you know, I like the idea that IMA and Ashoka are collaborating, because you can't be working in silos any longer. Okay? So a lot of our work is group work. We emphasize that you know, without that you're not going to go anywhere in the world. Building teams, building, you know, understandings of how you negotiate positions, how you respect others whilst you do that, and at the same time, you know, as you're doing all that, understanding what is the narrative that is driving change and how you can, you know, push that narrative out in the world. Okay. Uh, so, you know, in, uh, to, to the question you asked about, you know, how easy is it? It is not easy, but once you create a culture of, you know, people's understanding that their self-expression will grow, and that at the end of the course, actually, what we are aiming for is self-actualization. Okay, if you have actually achieved that, if there is some self-actualization that you have been able to achieve, that is what, you know, stays with you always. That is what makes people you know, attracted to the institute and always grateful. It also brings back a lot to the institute because then they come back with their experiences. They tell us about things, how the world is changing, what we need to engage with. Because when you're in academia, sometimes you tend to be a little bit remote from the real world. Uh, alums become actually the point of entry for us uh, back into that real world. And we actually do a lot of engagement with alums because that helps us to understand uh, phenomena out there as well as, you know, start to research them. So let me not say more because, I mean, there's lots that I can say about the sure. institute, but, you know, in No, but one, one thing I do want to mm -hmm. just uh, build on what you mm -hmm. said earlier. You, you mentioned, what, 140 electives? How many electives? Did that's you right, say? yes. And they were right, right across disciplines. Now, I often no, get asked... That's a lot more today than there were when I was at the institute. Right. So that's a big change. That's a big change. Yeah. Uh, on that one, you know, I often get asked that, uh, so what, right? Why, why are you teaching people all these, giving them so much choice? And going back to the point about, you know, this, this book is about thriving at work. We are at some level trying to help people with careers. Where do you see the, how do you answer that question? That, you know, if I'm at IMA and I'm studying filmmaking and music and art, I mean, it's all very noble to broaden your horizons. But does it really help, you think? And how does, how do you answer that question? Yeah, because it helps you because you then understand how to engage with others, okay? Not everyone is like you. And unless you engage with different disciplines, different ways of doing things, you will not understand you know, other people in the world and how they, you know, live their lives. Uh, that's to us very paramount, you know, in the, uh, if you have not got the ability to put yourself in someone else's shoes, to see their frameworks of existence, and then to, you know, think of ways in which you can benefit them as you benefit yourself, you have not lived a good life. So, really at heart, you know, th that is what we are looking at. It's not that it's a diversity of uh, electives which uh, don't have a thread running through them. 
The thread is, comes from the first year of the program where everyone does core courses. The electives are all in the second year where you, know, you are allowed to build on the frameworks that you had and you know, look at the world from different perspectives and therefore you know, understand lives in ways in which you would not have been able to. Okay. So Errol, yes. uh, when you talked about IMA and Ashoka, so one little piece of trivia. Mm -hmm. uh, while I was just doing scrolling the list of founders on my phone of Ashoka, and I counted around 10 IMA alums who are among the founders of Ashoka. Okay. So, so there's a little bit of IMA in. Great. Uh, <laughs> fine, so maybe fine. Take IMA the should credit. Take over Ashoka <laughs> at some stage. Yes. Uh, or the other way around. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Sanjeev, do you have a failure resume? A failure resume? That's what they say we should all have. That's what this book says. His first yeah. failure was at the institute. <laughs> <laughs> no, but to, just to elaborate on what, uh, you know. No, please go ahead, yeah. Just to elaborate on what, uh, you know, Errol said in the first question you asked. See, if I look back on IMA, now if you look at all the conversations, or several of the conversations I've had with you and Ashish and Vineet, right, in the past, is that we need to make our students work really hard. Because if they're not working hard enough, they won't, they, they won't, they just won't stretch. If they don't stretch, and therefore I've always said, He's the guy who's making you all work hard. No? <laughs> you're not working hard enough, let me tell you, okay? <laughs> and you know, the first year, the first year, first term at IIMA was sheer terror, right? After that, you got your second wind, and you managed. But the first year, first term was sheer terror in terms of uh, we had just not been used to this level of work, this level of you know information overload, uh, you know, and 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 this relentless pace of uh, of classes and assignments and projects and quizzes and things, uh, and that was a real shock. And I think really uh, that shift to that level of pressure and work made all the difference, at least to me. We have several alumni here. Uh, we've been thrown these here. From class of 84, uh, Pawan Agarwal's there from uh, 2002, 2002, and we were gentlemen there from 73 batch. Uh, I, I perhaps they'll agree with me, I don't know. But what about my question? Is, is <laughs> so listen, I have not made a resume since uh, I don't know when. Because I have not switched jobs since we I don't know We can do this live. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I don't have... No, but I jokes have about, I mean, the, the what, what do you remember as things that you really taught you lessons, as the book argues, that you know, you, in you should be proud. No, generally over f the f about failures in life. I think the one, isn't that so the, point what, uh, the point? That the failures you. taught you the big lessons, right? So if you think about your successful career, what was mm. some of the failures? So look, I'm a, a bit of a coward. I'm a darpok. Uh, I'm very risk averse. Therefore, I take risks very, very carefully, right? And therefore, I try not to fail because um, in the beginning, you know, uh, you know, you just keep your cost low. If you keep your cost low, then even if you are doing sales of 3 lakhs a month, you are succeeded because you're breaking even. Right? If your cost has been 20 lakhs, you are a failure. So, so the only thing in your control uh, were your costs. Revenue was never in your control. So my whole thing was to be frugal, keep your cost low, and you won't fail. And where did you learn that lesson? We are, uh, I grew up with that. We, uh, you know, every middle class uh, person in India grows up with that. There's just never enough money. So you've got to make do with less. Listen, uh, Ashish, uh, you've had a, 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 a very successful run as well uh, with your career. If you look at young people today, what would you say are real essentials of building a successful career today? I'd say read the book to start with. <laughs> <laughs> Mukesh and Priyank have done a great job. I think these six practices resonate very strongly with them, with me. Um, you know, I think the idea of grit or perseverance that they point out, uh, young people often want things too quickly. And I think particularly in today's entrepreneurial startup ecosystem, there's the get rich quick phenomenon, mindset. I think one needs to get over that. It, it takes you know, 15, 20 years, sometimes 25 years to build a great enterprise. Some people get lucky and do it in a few, but, but that's really how long it takes, right? 
And if you look at all the great businesses that have been built, I think it's people who persevered over a very long period of time. And often, the first, first five, ten years was full of lots of bumps in the road. It looks rosy, but really. So I think perseverance, grit is very important. I think there's a, something around intellectual humility here. I think the ability to listen to others, to be able to hold two points of view, uh, to not get too arrogant, because any time you are even modestly or moderately successful, there's the tendency to get you know, arrogant for success to go to your head. So I think it's very important to keep that in mind. Uh, and I think that's pointed out very well in the book. I think there's something else I like, I like in the book about declutter and to be able to detect the bullshit. Um, I think often, you know, we are very busy with work today. I, we do a, fill our calendars and have a lot of activity. And I think it's often worth stepping back to see what the, what's really essential, what's really important. My favorite case study when I was at business school was about this guy in New York who was one of the richest guys in the world who had a trading business which was one of the most complicated businesses because he procured fur from Canada, exported it to China, imported porcelain and tea from China. So he built a global business 150 plus years ago. And he figured out that you know a management system where he came to work at 9 every day, finished work by noon, his people did the work, he ate lunch, and then rode his horse for three hours a day, gave him time to think. And his, his big insight from horse riding was that his business was a trading business. So he took every year's profit and plowed it into Manhattan real estate because he could see the way the city was going. Ended up becoming the, one of the richest guys in the world because of that insight. And that came because he could, his mind was decluttered. You know, he didn't have all this bullshit all the time. And uh, I think those are some great lessons that really resonate with me. Thank you. Uh, I'm supposed to open it up to the audience, so please get your questions ready. But while you're thinking, I'll have some more questions for the author. So, Priyank, what's the next book? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, after doing this one, it's going to be a while before I do another one, uh, or we do another one together. Um, but yes, it's, it's really about, uh, you know, we've already talked about implementing what six practices are. So the personal journey map is something that is already integrated into this book, which is about, uh, you know, putting a, like a business model canvas uh, that you have for, a, for a startup. The personal journey map helps you put that together for your a startup of you. So it's, it's very, um, sort of the journey can get captured onto the personal journey map. Um, so based on how, um, you know, and a lot of our students use it, by the way. So we've actually, uh, use that in the classroom uh, very often. It's tried and tested. It's actually the only piece of research that we've implemented in the class ourselves and, and, and got great results out of it. So the next book is really going to be building that personal journey map into a model that can be used more ubiquitously and it can really um, connect to various different contexts and so on. But Mukesh may have some other ideas. Yeah. So um, on the personal journey map, um, it actually is a drilled down version of the business model canvas. Uh, these days, uh, startups in Silicon Valley and even in India don't write intricate business plans. They don't write 100 pages of documents. They may have a document with them, but they sum it up in nine boxes so that the investor in an elevator pitch can see the connection and see how the business is going to become prof profitable. So we have drilled down these nine boxes into six boxes and said that you start with where you are today with what you have, what you want to achieve, what you're willing to trade, what sacrifices you're willing to make, uh, what ups and downs you see in the journey ahead, and what is your ultimate roadmap. And uh, these six boxes are not carved in stone. So you keep visiting the personal journey map at regular intervals and chart out your, your career or your career path. Do you have a favorite out of the, is it seven? Six. Six. six, six. 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 Do you have a do you have a favorite? Yeah, so my favorite is intellectual humility that Ashish talked about because we are all confident idiots. You know, we don't know what we don't know, and we have a number of anecdotes in the book which I don't want to reveal right now. Please buy the book and read them. <laughs> that people don't realize and they get overconfident, and the ability to have what 
uh, what is called strong ideas loosely held. So you have a big ego and a small ego in the same person. A big ego because you are proud and you know what you are doing, you have in-depth knowledge of your field, but a small ego because you are willing to listen, listen to a contrary viewpoint and take what adds to your own viewpoint and that is what multidisciplinary thinking is also about. Very nice. Errol, back to you. Uh, you know, everybody these days is talking about both the changing workplace and the disruptions in education. In fact, recently, I think you were a bit mischievously headlined, quoted about, you know, all MBA programs <laughs> going, uh, you know, and everybody assumed that IMA was going to shut down the two-year MBA program based on that headline. <laughs> Uh, any any particular big trends that you and IMA are, are looking at of uh, coming out of both these trends, both the workplace and the education? You're asking for trade secrets, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> Naturally. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can reveal a few maybe. I mean, uh, one which everyone knows is that you know, it's no longer a world in which uh, you complete education and then you get into the world of experience and work. Okay. It's a world where you have to constantly reinvent yourself okay, because it's changing so rapidly. So there's a huge demand, therefore, for you know, short-term learning, uh, either online or offline. Okay. And so we've reoriented ourselves for that. Okay. That's been a big change at the institution. Uh, people think that our main focus is on the two-year program or on the you know, long-duration programs. That's not true. Uh, a lot of our focus is on executive education and case writing. We must be doing about 180 executive education programs in a year. Uh, and the reason for that is it gives us an insight into what corporates are doing. Uh, we we'll hear from them, you know, what are the problems that they face. It gives us research value, plus it brings back, you know, the real world experience into the classroom for the long duration program. So it's a win-win for young students and also for corporates, I mean, both ways. Okay. And of course for the faculty who then uh, stay grounded because they then realize that, you know, they really need to be on top of the game in order to engage with this diversity of, you know, people who come to the campus uh, and try to get, you know, some value out of us. Okay. So uh, I think the big change that we, you know, are seeing and are trying to navigate towards is this tendency towards lifelong learning. Uh, how does that impact the institution and it could be short one day you know uh, one day program and we also run you know three month program six month one year or two year i mean there, there's such a diversity of programs going on all of which you know feed into each other because there's cross learning cross functional learning uh, and it it really keeps us highly engaged i mean uh, the problem that I keep thinking about is, you know, is the burnout rate going to actually hit us very badly, you know? Mm. Uh, but the plus side of it is that uh, it actually allows, as I said, you know, everyone to benefit from all aspects of change that is taking place in the world. Thank you. That's, that's uh, very thoughtful. And I, we see a little bit of that in Ashoka as well, even though we are focused much more on the undergraduate side. But there's clearly a demand for uh, people to continue to learn. Uh, we run a program uh, on our online platforms where we find people, run a couple of courses that are very popular on our online platform. We find people who are still in high school and people who are in their 70s taking the same course. Uh, it's quite remarkable to see how people are going back to learning. Sanjeev, if you want to be an entrepreneur today, do you need an MBA? Uh, yes and no. Okay, there are enough stories of people who've done it uh, without being an MBA. Uh, enough stories of people who've done it. Do you it think you'll ever do a Peter Thiel type of scholarship? Hundred thousand uh, dollars, uh, don't go to college. No, I won't do it. Okay, I will not do it. 
Look, people have to find their own way and figure out if they want to be entrepreneurs, yes and no, or yes or no, and if so, when. And it's up to them to figure it out. Uh, I would not give wrong incentives and set wrong examples, and you know you can't go back from there if the guy uh, doesn't make it and he doesn't have a, even a college degree. Right? The truth is, in India, uh, degrees open doors. Right? Mm. So if I go back to what I got from my two years at IMA, which uh, helped me. So the truth is, look, when you do a management uh, two-year management program, uh, you know. Uh, the truth is, in, in actual, when you actually when you work, you don't use more than 10 or 15 percent of what you learned. But the problem is that when you're going through it, you don't know which 10, 15 percent. <laughs> so you got to do it all, and hopefully uh, something will work for you, and something else will work for somebody else, right? Uh, so you do the whole thing. I think what what it does is it gives you a full menu of what is where, right? Uh, so in one of our first companies, uh, I'm not a techie. Uh, my co-founder of that company is not a techie, uh, but it was, I had to, d we were selling a trademark search service on a computer, right? And you know how it is at IMA, or most business schools, uh, you know, you form study groups, uh, the engineer in the group does a, does a tech project, you're an advertising guy with a marketing project, so you don't actually do all the projects to the same depth, that, that's how we game the system, really. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, but, but you know, but here's this, so I wrote, sat up two nights and wrote the code myself, and how could I do it? It's because I'd done those three, four courses. I had not coded on campus, but I knew where to find what and read it and then do it, you know, in three days. So it gave me that ability. It gave me the, you know, whole menu of choices. The, naturally, the, in those days, the word networking had not been invented. So I didn't know it, but I had a network. Right. Uh, eventually, that helped, uh, and certainly, uh, you know, uh, people assume you're good if you're from a good institution. That assumption may or may not be true, but people assume it, and so it opens doors. So when I did my, you know, PowerPoint to raise funding, uh, the fact that I was carried an IMA label helped. So uh, would I do it again? Uh, I would. Thank you. That's very clear. Uh, one last question from my side and back to you, Ashish. You, you've spent a lot of time thinking about school education and children. And I know that you have some strong views about how they should be educated, but in terms of what this book talks about the future and some of the things we've been saying about the future of careers and work, what needs to happen at the school level? Yeah, it's, it's harder, particularly, to do it at the school level. But I think the, you know, Angela Duckworth, who's quoted in this book, actually has done a lot of work in schools. Uh, and some of her work has been adopted by a number of schools, where they really tried to actually create a, in one school, even create a character report card and a measure of grit. So I think our teachers assess children on literacy, numeracy, whatever exams, that they don't assess children on some of these attributes. And I think if you can start there in terms of what the mindset of children is. I mean, Carol Dweck has written a lot on the growth mindset. And I think there's ways now to, to start to m measure some of this, or at least to have some sense of where the children are, and to have that discussion with the parents. Frankly, I think that would go a long way if one could do that. So there's, there's a very interesting school, I think it's called Riverdale or Riverside, where the headmaster actually adopted this uh, using Angela Duckworth. And I think it's made a real difference, just the fact that, and they discuss it with parents, and parents now, and the children are aware of it. So I think just creating that awareness itself has made a huge difference. So we could have figured out in school whether Sanjeev was a Darpok or not. So I think, all, all I can say is even school kids need to read the book. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I've just expanded their market. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe a Hindi or a Bengali and a Tamil version. The translation, definitely. I'm, I'm I, I think a, a teen version <laughs> of the book. <laughs> a teen of the book. <laughs> Questions from the audience? Yes, sir. I if we could get... Start with the panga. So as you said, 
he, I want to ask him his two other development areas. One he said is a Darpok. And then my second question is to, to two authors. What's your, you talked about elevator pitch. I'd love to hear your elevator pitch, each of you. <laughs> I can tell you mine, I get stuff done. For, for mine, Kevin, at this point of time, the elevator pitch is only one, three words, read the book. <laughs> yeah, well, again, three words, learn the lessons. Yeah, what, was the, what was the question? No, no, I didn't say development area. It's one attribute. And <laughs> development area. <laughs> so I'm perfect. I'm <laughs> no, no. <laughs> so Kevin, you've got three word answers, huh? No, no. <laughs> no, no, no. One second. No, no. no, no. no, no. They, they, they know me better, so they, they'll tell. They'll tell you. Okay. Uh, Ashish? Ashish. No, no, no. <laughs> not, not in public. Feedback <laughs> 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 should be done in private discreetly. But, no, I need to be more, more focused. Yeah, I need to be more disciplined. Yeah. Um, hi, it is an absolute honor to see you and support you publish your pub to publish your book. Uh, is it acceptable to say I'm proud of my professors? I think it usually works the other way around. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> Absolutely. But um, my question was along the lines of, there's something entrepreneurial we all do in the everyday choices that we make, whether that's from picking out what to wear or picking out what to eat. In what ways was writing a book entrepreneurial to you? In what ways was it similar to starting your own business? So um, Radhika, the first class on entrepreneurship, if you remember, was to uh, find the right problem. And we started with that problem. We started with the problem of saying, hey, we've got so much of rich content, conversations, uh, experiences, all of you have contributed to these conversations that's captured in, that happens in our classrooms. But we also realized that these classrooms are a privileged classroom, right? It doesn't have, doesn't give access to as many people as we would like to give access to. And uh, that was the starting point. We said, let's create and document some of these journeys and stories and anecdotes so that we can reach out to many, many more people, much beyond the reach of IMA and Ashoka. Um, and, and through all of you, hopefully, we'll be able to uh, give access to this learning to many, many, many people. And the second was uh, what Mukesh was talking about, which is um, a lot of this is captured in research, which is read by five people, seven people, eight people. And it doesn't go into the popular genre for many reasons. So the second problem that we were trying to solve was to actually get all of this out to as many people as we can and make it more readable and more um, consumable. So hopefully with that two problems to solve, we wore our entrepreneurial hats and went out and, and, and created what we did. So yeah, it's, it is a little startup of ours. It's a little baby of ours. And, uh, and we are proud of it. And thank you for, for saying what you did. Yeah, Professor Harold, you have said just uh, you have 140 courses. Can you think of some courses r to improve the quality of politics? In India, we have a <laughs> more than 50% criminals and all types of people. Why not to make some contribution to do better politics? So the Association for Democratic Rights yeah. was set up by IM alums and faculty. And that's the association which actually requires politicians today to declare assets as well as declare criminal records. Okay. Uh, I think you know it's been a one of the good contributions of the institution. We do programs for bureaucracy at the highest levels, in fact, and we have on occasion. Okay, we don't do programs, but on occasion, been called on by you know, state and central cabinets to give advice where we believe we'd like to you know, do that in the national interest without considering politics. Okay? Uh, we are not in the game. Okay? I mean, it's an institute of management. We keep saying that. It's not just business. Management is whether you're in an NGO or whether you are you know, in the corporate sector or in government. 
and some of our students have you know done brilliantly in the NGO sector as well. Uh, you know, we will not reach out to you know politicians, but if they reach out to us, which they do occasionally, we do interact and give advice. Uh, to just to add to that, uh, there's a colleague of ours at I am Bangalore, uh, Tilochan Sastri. In fact, he was a batchmate of mine, a year junior to me at the IIT. He has done a lot of work in this area, and I think uh, all the all the knowledge that he, the, the, all the information that they pick up, is then disseminated, so that all of us can make informed choices. And if I may add, um, so we all we do have a course at Ashoka which is titled Governance Entrepreneurship, which uses the power of entrepreneur will, will to make uh, change at scale in the government. And I have my colleague, Piyush Tiwari, who's here actually, who teaches this course. And he's, he's brought in a lot of knowledge of, uh, of, of how we can actually use the entrepreneurial spirit to make, um, you know. No, IMA also started a school of public policy. policy. Yeah, okay, you're reminding me of things which. <laughs> <laughs> So the School of Public Policy is about three years old. Uh, it has, uh, you know, people from the world of practice as well as professors. One of the first professors of practice at the School of Public Policy was Parmeshwaran Iyer, who is currently the CEO of Niti Aayog. He got appointed from his position at IMA. Uh, and through the School of Public Policy, we actually interact with a lot of gov government people as well as politicians, yes. Uh, thanks for the talk. Uh, uh, very insightful, some amazing nuggets from this conversation. So one question I had is that even till a few years back, there used to be a certain set path for young professionals entering the workforce that this is step A, step B, MB, and then something else. But today we see those old norms broken in a very new labor economy, in a post-COVID labor economy, in a post-startup ecosystem labor economy. How should young professionals like me who are entering the workforce for the first time think about creating a career for the first time or visualize a career line maybe three or five years down the line as well? I think you want that to take No, no, Pramod <laughs> is the educator <laughs> amongst us. I think the, uh, when, when people ask me about questions about choices to be made and, and careers to be followed, I think the I'm a little bit of the old school that Sanjeev uh, is from. I think when you come out of uh, college or as you, I, I think the main thing is to have a multiple set of experiences uh, and to learn. I think too many people think they know what they want and they only want to do that uh, and are not open enough to all the opportunities. There are some people who do know uh, but most people don't, and so you have to really discover uh, the right career path as you go along. And I think this book also talks about that in, in some measure. I think when I was growing up, we didn't have too many choices. Uh, so, you know, you just did one thing or the other, and you've heard the cliched stories about engineering and medicine, and I come from Bihar, so, you know, civil service was uh, definitely a priority for us as we were growing up. But now that you have so many choices, uh, I think giving yourself a judicious mix of opportunities and experiences is really going to be very important in learning what you ultimately want to do in life. Uh, I also don't think that you can take it to another extreme where people tend to move very quickly without having experienced uh, what is uh, in any particular, having experienced a particular role or an industry. Uh, you get very quick jumps in salary and roles, and I find that I hire people at 35, 40 years old, and they have very fancy titles, but they actually don't know much uh, because they've been moving so quickly. So you do have the license now to try out multiple things, but you really have to kind of stay the course a little bit in each of these roles to uh, give yourself a chance uh, to experience uh, different uh, roles enough before you give up or move on and just chase titles or salaries. Goes back to some of the point about uh, being very transactional or just looking to get rich quick or big quick uh, with your career as well. So those are some of the uh, points of advice. I find that uh, all of you at this stage and especially at Ashoka have lots of opportunities and you tend to say no more than yes. Uh, and uh, when I was growing up and when we were growing up, we were willing to say yes more than no. Uh, and in some ways, it's 
odd that you have many more opportunities and, but are not willing to experience them uh, when we were hungry for those opportunities. So I think that's what you have to strike a judicious mix of, is experience lot, do, do a lot of different things that you can early in your career, uh, but also don't uh, just uh, go around snacking. I think uh, Sanjeev taught me this, that uh, very early on I used to ask him about you know, some of the trends that he was seeing in the career space. And he felt that young people had started to snack. Uh, on jobs. Sorry? Snack on jobs. Snack on jobs, right. And uh, I, I, I think it's great that you have the opportunity to snack. We never had that opportunity. How wonderful it would be to, you know, experience different, have different experiences and learn from them as you would from multiple electives at Ashoka. But at the same time, just snacking doesn't teach you anything. It's like just browsing through things and not really picking up real skills. So yeah, that, that would be my way of building a career today. Hi, sir. I'm Siddharth. Um, so I think all of us can agree that the intellectual humility they speak about in the book, uh, the greatest example is sitting in front of us today at this panel. Um, and coming to my question, sir, the top entrepreneurs of India are saying that every economy takes off once, and India's time is starting now. So in this time coming ahead, what is one skill set that we all should develop for the time coming ahead of us that would be really helpful? Let the entrepreneur answer that. So look, first of all, uh, so I began working in 1984. That's what, 38 years now. Uh, there has never been a time when people didn't say, India's opportunity is now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's be clear about that. <laughs> uh, so the one skill set, I think you just got to persist. You know, I think I think you need uh, while you 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 need depth. Keep at it, and keep repeating it till you get good at it. I I tend to agree more with you than with Sanjeev. I do think this is India's moment, the next 25 years, and I think it's the best time to be alive. You guys are luckier than us, and so I would just say ambition. You know, if if India is going to be a 25, 30 trillion dollar economy and we're 3 trillion today. I mean, think of the opportunities that you'll have in that journey that gets traversed over the next whatever 25, 27 years. The, the one quick uh, plug I want to make to the earlier question and this question, and it's in the book, is about building a T-shaped career. Uh, and I think that's been true for a lot of us. Whatever gyan we may give you about what you should do differently from us, I think in some ways we were generalists. We all are, if you look at our, uh, including the academics here. Uh, but we built the ability to build that depth of expertise where required. Uh, so whether it was uh, building uh, internet business, uh, or whether it was building India's first venture capital firm, or setting up institutions, I think all of us learned how to go deep into something while having a broad set of skills. Uh, and I think that is still true, regard regardless of where the economy or the world is going. I'm tempted to um, also answer this for you, Siddharth. And one of the words that we've used in the book is called audacity. And I think if you're asking me or asking us one trait to take away is to have that audacity to, to think big and, and, and really be ambitious with whatever you want to do. So, so, so go ahead with, with, with the power of uh, making a big change and have that audacity. Thank you for asking. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hello. Uh, thank you, professors. Um, I've taken a number of entrepreneurship courses with you in my time at Ashoka, and they've been some of my favorite courses. Uh, and I've learned about cultivating an entrepreneurial mindset, design thinking. And I'm sure there's no dearth of examples in your book about entrepreneurship in different spheres of life. But uh, at this stage today, I want to ask you, how do you define an entrepreneur? And for you, what is the definition of entrepreneurship? What does it mean for you? To me, yeah, Pramat, I'll have to take your leave. Uh, I'm sorry, I'll have to leave a little early. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.
So to me, um, entrepreneurship is about, I'm using the same word Priyank used a little earlier, the audacity of asking and the ability to accept failure. Um, you know, it's surprising that um, in the regular world, the regular world as in the corporate world or the business world, uh, if you fail at something, it's something you don't talk about, you would like to hide away, forget about it and move on. Uh, entrepreneurs treat failure in exactly the reverse order. They uh, fail at something, they learn something from it, and they carry on. Um, I tell students in class that uh, if entrepreneurship involves 70% failure, you have to be a fool to be an entrepreneur. But the interesting statistic that is not discussed is that 70% businesses fail, not entrepreneurs. So those entrepreneurs probably go on to the next business and the next business after that. So I think the entrepreneurship story um, has a lot of life lessons because we all have to be entrepreneurial. I mean, um, I've been teaching in liberal arts for the last 20 years now. Even the music major today has to be entrepreneurial because where are the jobs? I, I think for me, it's like one is not being a bada saab. <laughs> you know, in corporate life, people become bada saabs very quickly. Uh, and uh, when you get into a job, you'll understand what that means. Uh, second is, I think, to, it's better to beg forgiveness than ask permission. I think that's a little bit of an entrepreneurial mindset, that just go ahead and do it, you know, and dekhi uh, jaygi, kind of thing. And third is like ownership. It, when you're an entrepreneur, it's your baby. That's why you're not willing to abandon it. You just go, you'll persevere, you'll have sleepless nights, you know, you'll do whatever it takes. Uh, you'll pull out all stops, because it's your baby at the end of the day. And that's not the way corporate people think. You know, at the first sign of trouble, the guy will go get another job. One last question. They keep asking us these questions in class as well, but please, thank you. So, um, you've written six chapters in here. Typically, you know, the right number seems to be seven because seven, you know, sounds to music and seven colors in the rainbow, etc. So if you were to write a seventh chapter, what would that be? So the book actually has a seventh chapter, which is about implementing what you've read in the first six. <laughs> um, and I think the core of entrepreneurship, all the gyan that we keep giving is implementation. You can read the book, you can get excited with the stories, you can, you know, feel the high of what's happened related to what you're doing. But I think if you can't go out there and implement um, these sticks, that they are, they are just as good as the cover. Um, so I would say that the seventh chapter is implementation. And if I have to do this again, I would spend more time on saying, how do we implement this better? And that would be the um, sort of the, the next step. Yeah, we didn't want to be repetitive because there's so much of research out there. There's so many books that have been written about successful practices. So we wanted to distill it to just a few that you could think about, talk about, and implement. So we stuck to six. But um, let's see what feedback we get from the book. Let's see what we hear people tell us. And we'll think about it again. But I think six is, a, is the right number um, and not seven. <laughs> I'd like to really thank the panel, but uh, again, congratulations to the authors. Let's give them a big hand. <laughs> Errol, thank you very much for being here. It's great to have you uh, with us, and love to have you on campus soon. Back to you. Thank you so much. Um, can we have another round of applause for our panel here, please? Um, just to close things up, I'd like to invite the authors to say a last few words. Okay, so, um, you know, I have a long list of thank yous. Um, it takes, takes a village to, to write a book. Um, and. Uh, I can't, uh, I, I hope I can do justice to this, but I, I want to start with you, Errol. Thank you for the support that you've given us to the institutions, to the partnership, and for today, for coming down all the way from Ahmedabad for uh, this event. Uh, really, really a big thank you for all the mentorship that you've given us. Thanks a lot. 
Um, Ashish, Pramath, Sanjeev, I think uh, being on this panel with you can be anybody's envy. And the kind of uh, support and mentorship that you give to the center uh, is absolutely phenomenal. Um, the networks that you've opened for us, um, and just how gentle you are with, with breaking us into so many different elements of what we want to do. So you've supported, um, and I should say this for myself, you've supported every adventure that I wanted to experiment with, and, and I'm thankful for that, including uh, this book. Thank you so much. Um, there are lots of colleagues who are here from Ashoka, um, so I want to thank all of them for their support. I also, um, uh, Vineet, uh, who's been a big, big mentor and support. Vineet, thank you for, for coming today, and thank you for all the support that you give us. Raman, you've been teaching at the center, and we hope to get you back very, very soon. So thank you. Thank you so much. Professor for Raman. Professor Raman. Professor Sir. Uh, professor Yash Gupta. You're in the last row. All, all the professors in the last row. Yash, thank you for being here today. Piyush, thank you. Thank you so much for uh, all uh, that you do for Ashoka and our students. Um, Penguin has been a partner. And Sanjeev, you're here. Sanjeev, thank you for uh, introducing us to Premanko and Premanko for everything that you've done for us. Uh, this couldn't have been possible without you and the kind of hand-holding that you've given us. So really, really grateful. Disha, Eshwarya, thank you for uh, all your support as well. Let me interrupt here for a minute. Yes. We need that support going ahead now. <laughs> <laughs> and the second book which Pramath talked about. Yes, of course. <laughs> to make this book a success. Um, a big part of the village that supported us are the families. So um, I want to just quickly acknowledge my parents who are here. Mom, Dad, wave out. Uh, my wife, Pooja, and uh, little one, Avyan, and uh, Neeraj, Pukesh's wife. Where is Nikhil? Just stepped out. Oh, there, hi. OK, great. Thank you so much, folks. Thank you for, for every moment of support uh, that's, that's come from you. Um, and finally, I want to, if you held the book, opened the book, the first page of the book, anybody remembers? Yeah? It was dedicated to the students. Um, this is an outcome of what our students teach us every day. This is an outcome of the love and the energy uh, that we get from our students. And so um, I can't thank you guys enough for all the love, for being proud of us, for coming to our class every day, for doing the homework, for calling us tough graders. Um, it's, it's been a wonderful, wonderful journey. Um, so a big, big thank you to, to our class, to our students who are here and not here today. Um, I want to particularly thank um, Kavya. Kavya, you've been phenomenal with all your support to uh, this particular project. I want to thank the band. Um, you guys practice many, many hours. So thank you so much. There are three of you at the back there, so wave out, guys. Um, I want to thank my team, um, led by Ikanto. Ikanto standing right there. Um, He's been a super, super star. Ikanto, thank you for, for all that you do for Ashoka and for the center. And yeah, I guess that's the end of the village. Um, but all of you guys, all of you for coming here today and supporting uh, this story, this journey. Um, as you walk out of here, do share the message uh, that we want to take away from these classrooms that we, we teach in. So if you, if you share stories with people, if you share the journey of, of what we've talked about here, it'll be adding to our little mission of spreading the word and helping people thrive at whatever they do. Thank you so much. Um, as we close, we have a little, where's the cake? Yeah, it's on its way. So yeah. professors, uh, everyone, we'd just like to say thank you so much. We're extremely excited to see this journey and where it's heading. And also, just a small little thing, a little inside joke that Professor Priyank really enjoyed. So I'd like to call up the band again <laughs> to help us with this small thing. No, it's not birthday. It's, it's leapfrog. The book birthday. It's the book's birthday, yeah. Should we come down?
Kavya? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Sir, may I request yeah. you to join us for this downstairs? Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much.